Abedon Kalmé, The Phantom World, Angels, Magic, Apparitions, Vampires, Witchcraft, Possession by Demons and the Dead who Come Back to Life. 1746 Chapter 33 Spectres which appear and predict things unknown and to come. Both in ancient and modern writers we find an infinite numbers of stories of spectres or ghosts. We have not the least doubt that their apparitions are the work of the demon, if they are real. Now it cannot be denied that there is a great deal of illusion and falsehood in all that is related by them. We shall distinguish two sorts of spectres or ghosts. Those which appear to mankind to hurt or deceive them, or to announce things to come, fortunate or unfortunate as circumstances may occur. The other spectres or ghosts infest certain houses of which they have made themselves masters and where they are seen and heard. We shall treat of the latter in another chapter and show that the greater number of these spectres and apparitions may be suspected of falsehood. Pliny the Younger, writing to his friend Zura on the subjects of apparitions, testifies that he is much inclined to believe them true. And the reason he gives is what happened to Quintus Curtius Rufus, who, having gone into Africa in the train of the quaestor or treasurer for the Romans, walking one day towards evening under a portico, saw a woman of uncommon hate and beauty who told him that she was the spirit of Africa and assured him that he would one day return into that same country as preconsul. This promise inspired him with high hopes and by his intrigues and help of friends whom he had bribed, he obtained the questorship and afterwards was praetor through the favour of the Emperor Tiberius. This dignity having veiled the obscurity and baseness of his birth, he was sent proconsul to Africa, where he died, after having obtained the honours of the triumph. It is said that, on his return to Africa, the same person who had predicted his future grandeur appeared to him again at the moment of his landing at Katag. These predictions, so precise and so exactly followed up, made Pliny the Younger believe that predictions of this kind are never made in vain. This story of Curtius Rufus was written by Tacitus, long enough before Pliny's time, and he might have taken it from Tacitus. After the fatal death of Caligula, who was massacred in his palace, he was buried half burnt in his own gardens. The princesses, his sisters, on their return from exile, had his remains burnt with ceremony and honorably inhumed. But it was averred that before this was done, those who had to watch over the gardens and the palace had every night been disturbed by phantoms and frightful noises. The following instance is so extraordinary that I should not repeat it if the account were not attested by more than one writer and also preserved in the public monuments of a considerable town of Upper Saxony. This town is Hemlin in the Principality of Kahlenberg and the influence of the rivers Hamel and Weser. In the year 1384, this town was infested by such a prodigious multitude of rats that they ravaged all the corn which was laid up in the granaries. Everything was employed that art and experience could 
invent to chase them away and whatever is usually employed against this kind of animals. At that time there came to the town an unknown person of taller stature than ordinary, dressed in a robe of diverse colors, who engaged to deliver them from that scourge for a certain recompense which was agreed upon. Then he drew from his sleeve a flute, and the sound of which all the rats came out of their holes and followed him. He led them straight to the river into which they ran and were drowned. On his return he asked for the promised reward, which was refused him, apparently on account of the facility with which he had exterminated the rats. The next day, which was a fit day, he chose the moment when the elder inhabitants of the burg were at church, and by means of another flute which he began to play, all the boys in the town above the age of fourteen, to the number of a hundred and thirty, assembled round him. He led them to the neighboring mountain, named Kopfelberg, under which is the sewer for the town, and where criminals are executed. And these boys disappeared and were never seen afterwards. A young girl who had followed at a distance was witness of the matter and brought the news of it to the town. They still show a hollow in this mountain where they say that he made the boys go in. At the corner of this opening is an inscription which is so old that it cannot now be deciphered, but the story is represented on the panes of the church windows and it is said that in the public deeds of this town it is still the custom to put the dates in this manner, done in the year so and so, after the disappearance of our children.